friend. Oh my, I, I didn't think I would see you. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm the old one now. I'm good. I'm really good. Well, Megan thought I should should take a couple of days and be here. <laughs> I just thought I don't need it right now. There's so much to do, but somehow she knew. I, I'm. I know I shouldn't be watching this, should I? Just reflecting on 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 life, and <laughs> I guess so, my friend. I guess as we get older, we we start to reflect. Not a thing I would do when I was a youngster. It's a lot of reflecting lately. Yeah, I guess so, because I'm 40. <laughs> my childhood. I, you, you know about my childhood. I, I, I'm sorry. Sorry. Well, I had everything. Indeed, I, I absolutely had everything. What? Oh, how I felt? Um... I... I, I had everything and, and yet I had nothing. My childhood... For all its trappings of grandeur and castles and titles... The adoration of strangers was filled with silent grief. My mother, Diana, mommy, the people's princess, was more than just a media darling. She was warmth, light, and love. Love in a world that felt so cold and Transactional. But that light, that light flickered and, and just went away. For so long I thought she was going to come back, you know? <laughs> Losing her in that tunnel in Paris was wasn't just the death of a parent, it, it, it was it was the death of my my innocence. I remember the thousands of faces weeping for her. The crowds lining the streets. I, I, it was so confusing. But where was the comfort for for the twelve year old boy? Where was the solace for the son who couldn't cry in front of the whole world because royals don't show emotions, we don't cry, we're not allowed to cry. My father, King Charles, has always been a man caught between duty and desire. His relationship with Camilla, Queen Consort, Queen, just Camilla, is a testament to that struggle. While I understand the power of love, having left my royal duties for it myself, the path to their union left scars on our family. 
that after all these years are still healing. Camilla's journey from the other woman to it's even hard for me to say it but Queen has been a carefully orchestrated rehabilitation of her image. But at what cost? William, Willie as I call him, and I were expected to accept this very new reality without question. Even as we grieved her mother, it's a prime example of how the monarchy prioritizes its image over the emotional well-being of its members. I often wonder what my mother would think of all of this. Hmm, mommy. She understood the inner workings of the palace better than most, yet was treated as an outsider. In many ways, Camilla's ascension represents everything my mother fought against. The triumph of convention over compassion. The relationship between William and me, it's, it's, it's complicated. We were once inseparable, united by our shared loss and the unique pressures of royal life. But as we've grown older, the weight of expectations has driven a wedge between us. William embraced his role as a future king. While some may say that I, I struggled to find my place. When news broke of Kate's, of Catherine's preventative chemotherapy, my heart ached for them. No title or royal protocol can shield you from the fear that comes with a health scare. I wanted to reach out to offer support as a brother should, but a divide between us feels almost insurmountable now. It's a stark reminder of how the institution, that institution of monarchy, can strain even the closest of family bonds. William carries the weight of the crown wherever he goes, I know that. I've seen how it's reshaped him, made him more distant. Someone I barely recognize sometimes. Perhaps that's why we clash now. I've chosen to break free from those expectations while he's bound ever tighter to them. Whatever I say, whatever I write, whatever I do, I do it not to harm him nor his family. I love my brother and I always will. If my mother were alive today, I believe, I believe she and Meg, Megan would have an incredible bond. They share so much compassion, 
strength and a refusal to be silenced by an institution that fears change. Mommy was, Diana was a risk taker, bringing attention to issues that the world had forgotten. She was the voice for the voiceless, much like Megan is, much like she strives to be today. Both my mother and my wife were insiders treated as outsiders. The parallels are striking. Strong women who refused to play by outdated rules of monarchy. Mommy challenged the media in ways no royal had before. And Megan has followed in those footsteps. I think I think that's what frightens the institution the most. Women who won't stay silent or small or make themselves small. I can almost see, <laughs> I can almost see them <laughs> together laughing and supporting each other through any adversity. Mommy would love Megan. She would love her spirit and her dedication to making a difference. She would have been an incredible, well she is, grandmother to Archie and Lily. <laughs> Showing them the importance of perhaps using their platform for good. She tries, she tried to do that with Lily and me in her own rebellious way. She wanted us to understand how privileged we were and how ordinary people lived. And that they were the ones we should be looking at. understand I miss her every day but I feel her presence every day Meg and I talk about her all the time to Archie and Lily I want them to get to know her to know their grandmother mommy. As I enter my 40s, I can be can't believe I just said that, my 40s. I'm no longer defined by my royal title. I'm a husband, a father, and an advocate for the causes I believe in. Megan and our children have given me a new purpose, a uh, and a fresh perspective on what truly matters in life. The work we do now, fighting for equality, mental health awareness, environmental sustainability, Invictus Games, against cyberbullying, is driven by genuine passion rather than obligation. For the first time, I feel free to make a difference on my own terms. While the British press may continue to spin their narratives, pitting us against the rest of the family, we've moved beyond that now. Our focus is our future on creating a world where 
our children can can strive, can that they can strive without the suffocating expectations I grew up with. At forty, my old friend, I'm more certain than ever that the greatest gift you can give your family is the freedom to live authentically. I'm no longer wear <laughs> certain badges or titles or monikers or whatever. But I found something far more valuable. Peace, purpose, unconditional love. Mm. Mm. As my wife has said, enjoy, joy. And for that, I'm profoundly grateful. Profoundly grateful. And 40 years old, I find myself reflecting on the incredible journey that has brought me here. But more importantly, I look forward to the path that lies ahead. The years have taught me many, many things, but none more important than the power of love family and purpose. I am incredibly blessed to walk this life alongside my amazing wife, Megan, Megan, who shows up each day with an abundance of love, intelligence, care, and a beauty that radiates from her soul. She is my rock, my confidant, and the reason I strive each day to be better. I couldn't do any of this without her. Our children, Archie and Lily, with their kind hearts and infectious laughter, reminds us of the innocence and joy in life. They give us the drive to wake up every morning and work harder to leave behind a better world for them. They are the future. And it is from, it is from them that we push ourselves to make this world a little kinder, a 
little more just and a lot more hopeful. Turning 40 feels less like a milestone and more like a new beginning. I've learned that the greatest gift one can give our family is the freedom to live a fit time. Free from the constraints and expectations of others. My journey, which once revolved around duty and tradition, has now shifted towards purpose and passion. Together as a family, we are focused on building a world where compassion, understanding, and resilience can strive. While the past may be filled with complexities and challenges, it has led me to this moment, to a place of peace, purpose, and profound gratitude. I no longer define myself by the titles or roles that once held so much weight. Instead, I am defined by the love that surrounds me, from my wife, from our children, and from the life we are building together. At 40, I feel more grounded than ever. I'm focused on the future, on the legacy we will leave our children, and on the impact we can have on this world. This chapter is about freedom, about choosing love over obligation, and about making a difference in ways that truly matter. I have found peace in the purpose we've created as a family. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. Thank you. I thank you.